Hey friends, so today we're going to be talking about identity and how we can find identity in God and in his strength. In our lives, there are going to be a lot of voices trying to tell us who we are, whether that's our friends, whether that's our family, society as a whole, social media, whatever. There are going to be a lot of people trying to shape us and move us and try to have us look a certain way and be a certain way. So when we have so many voices around us trying to point us in different directions, it's really hard to figure out what our identity is. Today I'm going to be talking about a story that you're probably very familiar with and it's the story of the prodigal son. Basically what happens is this man who is the youngest son of his family goes to his father and demands that he has all of his possessions given to him. And the only time that you would get your inheritance from your father in Jewish culture is if your father died. So the implications are pretty obvious that the son basically wanted his dad dead just so he could have all the money that was rightfully his. And so the dad gave his son all of the possessions that was going to be going to him and the man left and he went to a distant land and spent it all and the son was having a pretty good time until he ran out of money and a famine struck in the country that he was in. And he started working for a Gentile farm owner with his pigs, only to realize that he was starving and the pigs were actually eating better than he was. And so he came up with this plan to go back to his dad and be like, hey, I messed up. And even if I could just be your servant, that would be enough for me. Now, this was a little tricky because if you were a Hebrew at the time, listening to Jesus telling the story, you would be kind of taken aback, kind of weirded out that this son would even think about going back to his dad which to us would be kind of a first instinct because why wouldn't you go back to your parents your parents love you and care about you and they want to see the best for you so why would it be weird for a jewish man to go back to his father after taking all of his possessions there was a tradition in hebrew culture called kazah and it sounds more festive than it actually is Whenever a Hebrew spent money or sold land or married another Gentile or someone that wasn't Hebrew or from Israel, there was a tradition that they would smash a clay pot at the feet of this person, representing their bond with Israel. And when a clay pot breaks, it breaks into a million pieces. And this represented that their bond, their friendship, their relationship with their community was broken and it could never be the same again. After this tradition was performed, the person that broke ties with their community could never come back. So when Jesus was telling the story, there's no doubt that the people listening in would be like, yeah, he's not coming back. He's not allowed to be with us anymore. But this father was different. When he watched for his son coming up the road, he immediately ran towards his son. People were probably waiting with the clay pots to smash it at his feet saying, don't come back, we don't want you here. But the father ran towards his son. And another interesting thing about Israelite culture, especially at this time, is that adult men did not run. It was a very dishonorable thing to do. That was meant for kids. And so to see an adult Israelite man to run was ridiculous. It was embarrassing. But that father was willing to embarrass himself in order to get to his son first. And his son wasn't even able to read the speech that he had prepared to apologize to his dad. The dad just immediately started saying, hey, I love you. You are my son. Put a robe, put a ring on his finger. Let's party, let's celebrate because my son has returned. He began speaking words of affirmation and of love over his son. And friends, that's exactly what God does with us. When we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior, and even as we continue our journey with him, he wants to be the loudest voice in our lives, affirming who we are, telling us that we're loved, that we're chosen, that we're worthy because he makes us so. And when people in this world, in our lives, want to tear us down, want to tell us that we're not good enough, to tell us that we're not strong enough, brave enough, worthy enough for certain things, God tells us, no, you are worthy because you are mine. You are chosen because you are mine. You are loved because you are mine. And these are truths that God wants to speak over your life and continues to speak over our lives. But sometimes we miss it. Sometimes our ears are closed. Sometimes we're not even paying attention. The other voices in our lives are far too loud 
and we miss out on God's. Throughout scripture, God's voice is described as a whisper. And the only times that we can really hear whispers aren't in crowded rooms, aren't where there's a lot of noise going on, but in silence and stillness when we're intentionally listening for God to speak. Friends, what voices are guiding who you are? What voices are telling you who you are? Is it God's? Is it your friends? Is it your family's? Is it the expectation that the world sets for you? Because God knows who you are. God knows everything about you. God not only knows you, but he loves you. He wants nothing more for us to fully embrace who he makes us and will make us to be. And so friends, I don't know what identity you're trying to attach yourselves to, but I can only hope it's from the one who made you, from the God who loves you, from the God who knows you, and who continues to be faithful to you. Friends, know you are so loved and so appreciated and so, so important. I hope you have a fantastic week. God bless you.